the Too Rich to Miss podcast. What the deal, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Too Rich to Miss Unscripted right here on YouTube. Today's episode, we have a lot to go over today. We will be obviously talking about the market. We are going to be talking about the price of Bitcoin going forward in the future. We are going to be talking about members of Congress getting Bitcoin donations to their campaigns. We're going to be talking about the Bank of Canada and what they're saying about central uh, about a central bank digital currency. And we are going to be talking about a couple of other things if we get a moment. So as we go on and get this day started, it is today is Tuesday, October the 10th. And it is an interesting day to be in crypto. Let's get it. The Too Rich to Miss podcast. Welcome to today's show. This is your Southern Urban Voice here, the hottest voice in crypto, coming to you live with your up-to-date crypto news that you can use and how it can help you as the regular investor that's new coming into this market and what it can mean for you. And although a lot of the uh, topics are going to be a lot of the overall topics are going to be uh, on what's happening. But at the end of the day, here's the long, here's the short answer. If you just can't get past this portion of the video, dollar cost average by Bitcoin, not financial advice. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying dollar cost average time in the market always beats timing the market. And as always, these articles that we're going to be talking about today will be on my Twitter page right here at Too Rich to Miss on Twitter. And also be sure to come right over here and check me out and subscribe to the channel on uh, on YouTube at Too Rich to Miss. Shout out to the 95% of you that watch the videos that have not yet subscribed nothing but love for you as well uh leave me a comment and let me know what i can do to get you to be a subscriber to the channel now also for all of your voiceover needs obviously i am the southern urban voice and if you need any voiceovers be sure to go through and check out my website richardhawks2.com richardhawks the number two dot com uh we have all type of things going on got a lot of podcast intros and outros that i've been doing here lately I got podcast editing services available for some of you other podcasters out there. And we also have all type of voiceover going on. Uh, so just uh, get at me. Uh, shoot me a DM on any platform. Uh, shoot me an email. Go to the website. Or if you're just on a seriously, seriously tight budget, uh, just go and hit me up on Fiverr and we can get to work over there. All right, and also be sure when you go, when you look at the channel uh, and you go through the video, the links and there are links and affiliate links down there in the description uh, that all of those do help out the channel and there are good tools to help you. Now, the only one down there that is there that I don't really suggest uh, use at your own risk is Coinbase. I put it there because it's very simple to use, but the fees are very high and they pretty much tell the government any and everything that you do uh, with all of your stuff, which uh, we don't talk about doing anything illegal over here on this channel. Uh, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, Coinbase, they, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they are easy to use, but they are not my first choice. So uh, now, but let's go on and hop straight into the markets. As we can see, it's a lot of red in the market today. And you know how if you've been listening to me and you've been following this channel, you know that when there's red in the market, I feel like the market is on sale. I look at these as buying opportunities uh, for because uh, just because there are other there's always going to be other turbulent circumstances that may affect the market that doesn't have anything to do 
with the viability and the functionality and the potential growth of the company that these tokens are attached to. Uh, some tokens are going to be shit whether the market is going up or it's going down. And well, if the market is going up extremely, even the shit coins go up. But uh, you don't want to be invested in the shit coins. On days like the day when the market is red, then you definitely want to be out shopping and dollar cost averaging in. And that's why we say here, DCA is the way. Time in the market always beats timing the market. And when you spread your investment out over time uh, and you accumulate and you accumulate on these dips like we're having, and especially going forward, the market is going to be kind of turbulent. We're going to be talking about that as well. Uh, so you want to be mindful on what's going on and do manage your risk accordingly. It's it's it's, it's going to be interesting going on out here because uh, and as you can see, Bitcoin is still holding on strong where it is. Speaking of Bitcoin holding on strong where it is, let's get right into our first story. And a couple of these we're going to just kind of touch on and get in and out because, you know, I like to keep these at like to keep these videos kind of short and uh there's lots of information and things that we can be talking about here and there's a couple of points that i want to bring out to you with this particular article now obviously being a i guess being a semi uh, semi bitcoin maximalist i'm not a total max maximalist but uh i do tend to have a lot of bitcoin maximalist views so an article like this obviously makes me feel really good uh, but for a few reasons, number one, I definitely want to see Bitcoin go up to ten, uh, go up to a hundred thousand in 2025. That is great and perfect, uh, totally perfect. Now, but I also want to bring your attention to where this information is coming from. This information is coming from Bloomberg. Bloomberg, if you don't, for all of us who do know and for some of us who don't know, Bloomberg, that's traditional finance. Now, when you start having traditional, the more you have traditional finance coming out and giving and talking about Bitcoin and these potential prices and where it's going, then mass adoption and more knowledge of this and more institutional money is already coming in uh, we just don't see it and the reason why and i bring this up to kind of go back to what i was talking about with the price of bitcoin everybody's been kind of talking about how the price of bitcoin uh hasn't been moving even in the midst of all of this bad news that's floating around and the reason being is because all of this bad news is priced in right now. And what I mean by that is there's so much institutional money going into this on the back end. Do I need to remind you that Grayscale bought the bulk of their money? If you if you listen to any of these interviews that he's done on some of these bigger platforms, then you will hear that uh, they were buying slowly in the market. They didn't go through and and buy in big clumps where you could just can't wear the bots and chain analysis and all of those things would pick it up and be able to really see that something major is going on. They are sitting right beside us regular normal retail investors uh, sucking up the Bitcoin while us regular retail investors are kind of over here on the side just kind of looking around like... Uh, uh, hmm, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? And, of course, not investment advice. I'm just saying. Uh, you got uh, Bloomberg talking about Bitcoin to reach 100000 per coin in 2025. And they're using their indicators. And, of course, we can go, th go through and talk about the different points in the article and all of that. But the main thing I want you to think about here is... um. You know, uh, Bitcoin is digital gold. And this is not just what we're talking. This is not just me as being a techie and a fan of, uh, of innovation is saying uh, this is also Bloomberg saying this as well. Uh, so the more that they say this, you can believe that institutional money is already in here. The question is, are you in here? Let's go on to our next article here. Now, I thought this to be really, really intriguing and 
this is also once again all a part of what is going to help to get uh, mass adoption going and to really get uh, some of the older people that are in Congress right now who need to be out of Congress um, to understand some of these things. Now, the only thing that I would say is nobody's going to be too excited by a $50 uh, donation to that campaign. I mean, come on, guys, out here in the world of crypto. I mean, come on, y'all. Y'all got to step it up. Uh, these are con these are politicians we're talking about here. You can't tempt a politician to lean in your direction by only by giving a mere fifty dollar donation. You got to do a little better than that. Uh, but members of the United States Congress will receive a fifty dollar campaign contribution in Bitcoin today. Uh, October the 6th as a part of a new initiative by the Chamber of Digital Commerce by the Chamber yeah by the Chamber of Digital Commerce PAC to educate lawmakers on the potential of blockchain technology Crypto for Congress is an initiative to provide all 535 members of Congress with a hands-on experience with cryptocurrency starting with a $50 Bitcoin donation from the Chamber of Digital Commerce PAC that will empower them to set up a wallet, receive, and send their first cryptocurrency. This is really cool. I think this is really good, and this is a definitely a step in the right direction because as we both know and as I agree with in this particular article, once you get people to use it, uh, there's going to be some people who are going to have an aha moment. And then there's some people who already have an aha moment and they're just um, have their own agenda and they don't want uh, true decentralization to start to come into play because it will uh, upend some things, which is the reason why I said, uh, you know, I mean, come on, guys. Chamber of Digital Commerce Pact. uh I love what you're doing here, but if you're gonna get, if you going if you're gonna donate, using the term lo loosely, if you're gonna donate to politicians, you got to really, you got to do something. You got to really get their attention. This is real cute, uh, but it's real cute and it's a step in the right direction. But you know, I mean, hey, if you're gonna, if you're gonna donate quote unquote to politicians campaigns you really really need to uh give them something they can feel next article let's go over here and talk about the bank of canada the bank of canada says cbdc's have inherent risks in new study now before we even talk about go through and uh, highlight some of the points in here central bank digital currencies i've always uh and i'm um, I've always said privately and publicly, these things are, uh, <laughs> these things will provide way too much financial control and oversight. Um, if the government's really, really, and, and granted, I understand why they don't want to do it because that, you know, that's a two-edged sword. Uh, because... <laughs> When you have uh, sent, when you have these digital currencies, there everything is on a ledger, and God forbid we start to really see, and the general public starts to understand what the repo market really is, and God forbid uh, the av the public and the general public and the average Joe starts to really understand what financial engineering is, and and god forbid the average joe starts to really understand the depth and the major impact of quantitative easing or money printing and uh and here in a minute we're gonna be we're gonna really feel it when uh hyperinflation starts to kick in and i know i know i know i know uh, they said it's only going to be, they're not going to let it get more than 2% and all of that. Okay, all right, all right. Have you been to the grocery store here lately? How's the prices of food uh, in your grocery store? Put it down in the comments. Is food going up in your area or not? 
Uh, these central bank digital currencies, man, they are, they're not, uh, they're not good. I don't think they're good, and I'm not the only one who doesn't think they're good. But once again, uh, uh, these governments and these politicians, they're going to do what's going to be best and most efic- efficient for them and their agenda. You know, um, and just like what Canada's saying here, uh, they can pose security risks to users. You think? <laughs> oh my god now li- listen to this an anonymous token based central bank digital currency CBDC would pose certain security risks to users now check this out these risks arise from how balances are aggregated from their transactional use and from the competition between suppliers of aggregation solutions the report reads however the Bank of Canada appears to believe that there are ways to mitigate these risks, saying the central bank could mitigate these risks in the design of the CBDC by limiting balances or transfers, modifying liability rules, or imposing security protocols on storage providers. Now, all of that... uh, now, I'm going to translate all of that into English. All of that means in English is they're going to be so deep in your pocket, they're going to know if you breathe on that thing wrong. Uh, I mean, it, this is this is deep. I mean, and granted, we're being tracked a lot right now, but um, it, if, if they go to these central bank digital currencies, you're talking about being able to track your cash. Uh, think about if every physical dollar that was in your pocket could be tracked. And uh, I mean, and it, it, it's deep. And I know we're talking about cryptocurrencies here. Um, and I know that we're talking about, you know, even with blockchain and the uh, distributed ledger technology and such. Yeah, I get it that that can be viewed and tracked as well. Uh, I mean, but this this is this is a, a bit much. Uh, kind of like I said before, can't nobody turn off my Bitcoin. Uh, they can turn on, they can shut you down over here. And, you know, Candlebat, and I, and I know there's going to be someone out there that's really intelligent is going to say that, you know, hacked Bitcoin can, you know, can, uh, they can track it and all of this other stuff. And I, I get that as well, but, but we're talking about, uh, we're, you know, we're talking about those, we're regular people here, we're, we're squares that are sharp on all corners around here. We're, you know, we're regular people over here. We're not trying to do anything inherently. Uh, we're not trying to do anything bad or anything illegal over here. We just want to be able to have our privacy to do whatever we feel, how we feel, without having to have everything we do tracked. So, yeah, this, and this, you should really go through this one. There's some interesting stuff in here if you really want to see what's going on over there. Now, uh, let's kind of hop over into some tech stuff. Uh, Platforms. Are platforms moving from Ethereum to Cardano? This is an intriguing article where they were going through talking about this. And and I'm a fan of both, to be honest with you. Um, I own Cardano and I obviously own Ethereum. Um, And my thoughts with all of this right now, and this is once again not to really geek out on it, you know, because we can just go through and geek out on it. But speaking to my older crowd, this is one of those things that you need to keep your eyes on. Uh, now, from a long term perspective, you know, we're Cardano was a good project. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're kind of slow. Um, but this space is still new. And just speaking from speaking as a long term investor perspective and, you know, looking at projects that could last that I think are actually going to last. And I mean, Cardano was doing some positive things um, to be around here long term. Now, will anybody ever just leave? You know, will everybody totally leave Ethereum? Who knows? What we do know, though, is that the gas fees, 
this gas fees and this way that you got to pay these gas fees can be serious and uh i mean when we start to talk about 50 60 70 80 90 100 200 dollars per half you know it, this gas can get to be really expensive on ethereum but once again i this is all just growing pains as well and those of us who have some age on us we understand what that is you uh, know and that's why speaking to my older crowd that <laughs> I'm speaking to my to my 35 to 45 crowd right now. We can understand when something is initially growing. You're going to have some pains and you're going to have some things that you just didn't think about and some issues that came about that you just didn't see. So, I mean, Cardano was taking advantage of the opportunity and just like some other platforms, I mean, it's just like you got Polkadot out there doing their thing and they're really and they got some good stuff going on. I own them, too. Uh, so it, we never know what's going to happen, but Ethereum is going through growing pains. Are they going to totally die? Uh, it, will there ever be someone that totally quote unquote kills Ethereum? We shall see. We shall see. But, uh, they've been talking about killing Ethereum. Uh, they've been talking about Ethereum killers since way back before 2018 when I got into the space. Uh, so I don't honestly don't think anybody's going to kill it. Uh, anytime soon now and one other thing I want to touch on here is um, there's something going on over in the NFT space and I know you guys have heard about it non fungible tokens uh, digital art is what this is I mean and this stuff this is new it's not well it's not new uh, but it's uh, it's getting a buzz right now uh, is getting a real big buzz right now. So if you're an artist and you're into the gaming thing and you're uh, and you're into and you're uh, into this digital art, it might be something you want to look at. This NFT space is really interesting. Um, it's this is one of the newer parts of this growing of this growing cryptocurrency industry. Um, it's intriguing. I mean, and even when you start getting these uh, professional regular artists uh, releasing digital artwork on the blockchain is. Yeah, yeah, it, it's getting serious. Yeah, it's getting serious. And then when you oops, not that one. And then when you <laughs> when you see things like this. Crypto trader prepares to pay $37,000 in Ethereum for drawing of Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, you know, you know, I mean, and this isn't even digital, but it, you know, but art, art, art is just one of those things. Oh, this is an NFT as well. Yep. Yeah, this is an NFT as well. I mean, and uh, once again, it, <laughs> this whole uh, NFT space, this is new and this is it's it's getting to be pretty serious. I mean, you got to think about this now. Thirty seven thousand dollars for a digital drawing that's on the blockchain. And this I mean, and the only thing that makes this digital drawing unique is the fact that it's on the blockchain and it came from whatever the artist is uh so it didn't you know and then i was looking on rari um a super rare it's look this stuff is deep we'll have to do a whole separate video just about nfts and i probably will see when we get somebody on the channel to talk about that because it that is this is going it's going ballistic right about now with these nfts and everything that's going on in the space so what is the overall story and the overall more to the story of today's mar of today's update with the news and everything and yes john mcafee got arrested as well yeah we saw that pop in the screen while we were all talking so what is the point the point right now is still the same dca is the way time in the market beats timing the market crypto is a is brand new it's still a baby out here this is the best time to be to find these hidden gems 
scoop them up and and ride and uh and ride on out and ride uh so other than that um that that is really it for this video we want you guys to be safe and be careful out there there's a lot of scams and a lot of bullshit floating around in this industry it's a lot if you're going to get into the side of speculation and trading and all of this other stuff uh that i typically don't talk about a lot uh it's it's dangerous out here y'all um if you're going to get into this yield farming and all of this stuff it, you can lose your stuff you can lose your capital uh, I speak from an investment perspective. I speak from a capital preservation perspective. I speak to try to tell you guys to manage your risk and to to manage your risk and to go in with your eyes open. Never get out here with uh, put no more money out here that you can that you can't afford to lose. If you got some money out here in crypto and the market takes a dive like it may take a dive because of this uncertainty that we're going to be going through here over the next few months, if um. If you can't stand a 30, 40 percent dip, a drop off in your portfolio, then uh, yeah, <laughs> you might you might want to um, you might not want to be over here. Uh, but on the same token, we get 30, 40 percent pumps, 100 percent, 200 percent pumps over here, depending on uh, what you get your coins in. Uh, so not financial advice, always D.Y.O.R. And as always, don't forget, I am your Southern Urban Voice. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Too Rich to Miss. All of these articles will be on Twitter for you to really go through and do a deep dive. And if there were some important points that you want me to go over that I missed, put them in the comments and let me know. We're going to beef this thing up and try to get you something every other day, if not almost every day. Going to reach out to some of these other crypto guys in the space and, uh, and start to get some other conversations going. Uh, I am the Southern Urban Voice, and this is Too Rich to Miss Unscripted. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. The Too Rich to Miss Podcast.